Alrighty then, welcome to another video, The One Good Road here. Today I want to give you a list of my top 5 best value bikes that I have ever owned. I have had these bikes for about 6 months to a year, each of them at least. I still have some of them to this day. And the, ro and the bikes will be sort of like road bikes, gravel bikes, adventure bikes. So it'll range from thin tires to wider tires, and then I'll have one mountain bike at the end as a sort of bonus bike because I know that not everyone wants to do just road riding and gravel riding. So let's get straight into it. The first bike I ever owned was a Berg Fiego 7.5. Now I'm noticing in this list that maybe I shouldn't get too much detail of the specification of each one because it does take a while to get into. But the bike itself when I first bought it, the price was around 500 euros, which was not bad. This was a Portuguese made bike. And it's quite difficult to find this bike still to this day, but if you're lucky, you might find it online. But it's a road bike, it has no disc brakes, it's rim brakes, and it has a Shimano group set. So it's got Shimano cranks, it's got very basic ones actually, and it's got Shimano Shora shifters and derailleur and front derailleur, I believe. And it weighed, yeah, it weighed 11, no, it was really light for the frame. I think it weighed nine kilos, it was an alloy frame, and it had a carbon fork. The wheels were fine, I don't think I only broke like one or two spokes in like two years or something like that. And it was a really decent bike, I still have it to this day, it's an amazing bike actually for the price, for how light it is also for back in the day. But yeah, it's terrible off-road, um, this bike is not for you if you're going to go off-road. And now you're probably wondering, can you move on to something a bit more future? Because this bike doesn't even maybe it's because it's been slightly discon it's been discontinued, right? So number four on my list is the Fuji Sportive 1.5 D. Now, when I bought this bike, I was planning to go from top to bottom of the states with it. I have some footage, which I'll obviously show footage throughout the video of each bike that I used. Now, this bike was really decent for the price. I think I bought it for five hundred and 50 or 600 dollars roughly and this bike has been actually discontinued as well but the actual bike i'm talking about but they've continued the lineup of the whole sporty range but the bike that when i had it was the shimano sora shifters again you're going to hear sora shifters and tiago shifters quite a bit but anyway it has the old version of the sora shifters on the front it had the derailleur, which was, I believe, a Tiagra, actually, so it's a really decent one there. The brakes were um, disc brakes, and the tires were 28 mil, which was really decent. I didn't break a spoke, I believe, uh, in, like, a few thousand kilometers. It was really good. It was an alloy frame and a carbon fork, but the main reason I bought this bike was because of the color. Like, for me, a bike is more about the feel rather than all of the specification. Um, if you want to make it lighter, drill holes in it, you know, if you wanted to. Well, it'd be a bit crazy, but anyway, um, the point is that this bike was really decent, and I love the color of it, and it weighed, I think, 10 kilos. It had all of this oval concept stuff, which is also made by, in tandem, I think, with Fuji bikes, I believe. It had Vittoria tires, which were really cheap um, to buy over and over again if you wore them out. But yeah, it was a really decent bike. There was nothing wrong with it. Uh, sadly, I got in an accident, so I don't have that bike anymore. But I've got a bunch of footage of it. The next bike in my list is another Fuji. It's a Fuji Tread 1.3. I bought that in 2016, so it was my successor to the Sportive. Now, just to be clear, they also don't make this Tread bike anymore. You can get it secondhand. I've seen it secondhand elsewhere. And it is a really decent bike. Um because it's probably the most expensive bike in this list. I bought that one for about 800 bucks, US dollars. And it was it was just an amazing bike. It had a, Sh a Shimano Tiago group set for the, the, the whole group set completely, cranks, front derailleur, and the shifters. The tires were 32 millimeter, something by Vieira Citywide, I believe, something like that. And they were really decent. I was very happy with them. I had them for like 35, no, 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 even more than that, maybe 5,000 kilometers or something like that. And I didn't get a single puncture with them. It was really amazing. And off-road, they were really good as well. 
and I missed that bike. It was really decent. Uh, weighed 10 kilos, I believe. Carbon fork on the front, again, alloy frame. It was quite heavy but sturdy, felt very strong. Uh, had nothing wrong with the bottom bracket and an oval concept saddle again, bar tape, you know, yada, yada, yada. I have reviews on all of these bikes apart from the Fiego on my channel, by the way. So just click the links down below and hopefully that'll make sense. Um, but the successor to this bike, if you're looking for one again in this year, it would be the Fuji Yari. That would That's the successor to this bike. It's a decent bike. It's going to be more expensive. That's why I'd recommend the Tread instead. I think it was better value. But the Yari is still really good. It's more built for touring rather than just adventure riding. Adventure riding to me is like riding on road, gravel, and then going back to your house and then maybe going touring for a week or something like that. It's a mix of a different bike. Um, but the Yari is built definitely more for touring. They, they, they have an entire Tiagra setup, but they also have, I think, all the way up to Altegra and stuff like this and maybe SRAM. But there's lots of different variants and... They're just more expensive. Best go and check out their website. Now the next bike on that on this list is a really good one. It's the B Twin Triban 500. I've made reviews on my channel about it, and it's just been quite an impressive bike over the last few years. I still have it, and it's an alloy frame with a carbon fork, believe it or not. And it weighs. It was kind of heavy. I think it weighed 11 kilos. And it had a none of it did not have a Shimano or a SRAM group set. It had a MicroShift group set, which was okay, but it felt very toy-like. And the cranks were fine-ish. They sometimes made a clicking noise every 1,000 kilometers or so. Um, but honestly, you can't get better value road bike for that price. I think it came with 25 millimeter tires from B Twin. Probably best to change it from the B Twin brand because Decathlon's whole lineup of everything is very budget orientated it's not really it's trying to blend quality with budget i have friends who've actually toured with this bike with me but i have to mention though that the uh wheels are not very strong we got in an accident at one point which was kind of a funny story where there was a tra set of traffic lights and i went through them and then my other friend was following along and then i saw a cafe and i was braking and then he didn't see me braking because uh, he went through the traffic lights and then he just rammed into the back of my rear wheel. It was kind of bad but funny. But anyway, I digress. It's a really decent bright bike. I've I've toured with it in France as well. And it's only 300 euros, I believe. And you can get it for even probably less than that if you buy a second-hand model. Lots of B-Twin brands are really, really decent price for road bikes and for city bikes. The next bike in my list, probably the best one I've ever owned so far, would have to be the Reed CX bike from Reed Cycles. Now, this bike uh, is really cheap for the price. I think you can get it for 600 Australian dollars, which is roughly 500 US dollars. I think they're going to roll out to international markets soon, but right now I think it's only in Australia right now. But it's a really good bike. Um, I've ridden 5,000 Ks with it. The only problem I have with this were this with the spokes. But since then, they've upgraded those spokes in all of those different models from all their new lineup. And to run down the specification, and also their customer service is really bloody amazing for how how basic the coal company is. It's quite amazing. Um, specifications: We've got the Shimano Claris, uh, pretty much the entire group set apart from the cranks. And it's okay. It shifts fine. There's nothing fancy about it. Don't expect really fast, brilliant shifting. It's a 16 speed, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and it's fine. There's nothing too fancy about it. The disc brakes are also okay, but they're much better than another bike, which I'll get into on my bonus bike uh, mention. And it weighs 11 kilos, I believe. So it's it's kind of heavy. But for the price, it's not, it's really, you can't complain, really. It's a aluminium frame and an aluminium fork. And uh, the Reed Cycle saddle, I believe, nothing fancy, too fancy about it. But, and it's Alaska cranks. And I had no problems with the cranks so far. Um, so yeah, it's really decent. Go and check out my review. If you want to get $50 off a Reed CX bike, uh, you go and head out to the link below this video, either in the comments or in the description, and you can get, yeah, $50 off, and you'll support the channel, which would be really amazing. 
But uh, anyway, so the last bike, which isn't really on my list because it's not part of the road bike touring sort of all round a city bike kind of thing, but a mountain bike some people would like and prefer. So I do have a rally bike on my list, which I have ridden with. I rode from top to bottom of New Zealand with it. And there was actually nothing really bad about it, surprisingly. I bought it for 250 pounds. I think it was like 300 and something or 400 something not, uh, New Zealand dollars. And you can get it probably really cheap. I sold it, I think, for, I sold it to someone for like 200 bucks. And it's a really decent bike. I, I had no problems with the tires. I think I didn't have a single puncture, I think, for 3,000 kilometers off-road mostly off-road, like 60% of the time I was on dirt and gravel. And I broke one spoke. Um, that's probably because I was carrying heavy gear on, on a bike, which is not designed for touring at all. But it was a really decent bike. It's called, the, uh, the, the full name of the bike is the Rally Venture 27.3. There are other models of this, but I went for the silver one because I liked it. And I miss having suspension. One of the downsides of a cyclocross bike is if you're on quite a bumpy road, suspension is actually pretty worth it, I would say, because your bags don't, you know, move around so much. The downside of this bike was that the shifters was uh, for obviously a flat bar mountain bike system, and it was very basic. I think it was from like the Al, the Alris um, lineup. I, I can't remember the exact one, but it's a very basic um, sh set of shifters, but they worked fine-ish. There was nothing fancy about them. They took a long time to shift, but they worked just okay. And the brakes were pretty poor on them, let's put it like that. Like they worked, but you'd really have to dig into them, uh, especially in wet conditions. And the bike felt very heavy off-road, climbing up hills. But you can't, again, you can't really complain for how cheap the bike was, it was amazing. So anyway, that is a list of my top five best value bikes. I hope it helps you on your journeys and um, on your list of trying to find the best bikes. Uh, I would say the Reed CX bike is right now what I've found to be the best value bike and maybe the Fuji Sportive. If you have any other suggestions of your best value bikes, please leave them down in the comments below. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please leave a like, subscribe. I'll have some more uh, content of these bikes in the future or other bikes in general actually. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.